Hi guys. Um, last time we uh, have discussed about the elastic beam theory, which is an introduction to the geometric methods in determining deformations, such as the deflection and the rotational deformation, which is known as the slope in beams. No? So today we will be discussing about the double or the direct integration method, or what just or what we call the DIM. Now, before that, <coughs> let's recall some our mechanics of deformable bodies. And also, let's recall our last discussion about the elastic beam theory. So last time, <coughs> we said that based on the elastic beam theory, we have the M over EI equals 1 over rho. So uh, M here is moment as a function. R here is the radius of curvature. And EI is what we call the flexural rigidity. Okay, which is the product of the modulus of elasticity of the material and the moment of inertia. Okay? So in that case, let us recall <coughs> in our differential calculus, what is the definition or what is the formula in determining the radius of curvature? So this is actually also used in dynamics of rigid bodies no? when we are considering um, curve motions. Okay? So our radius of curvature is defined as your 1 plus the first derivative of the function squared raised to 3 halves divided by the second derivative of the function. So this can be expressed as dy over dx or the function, the derivative of the function y with respect to variable x. And this is the second derivative of the function y <coughs> with respect to the function x. So now, approximately, we can determine the value of the radius of curvature. So paano natin yun magagawa? Imagine we have a differential strip. A differential strip has a thickness which is actually very small or very thin. So lakihan muna natin yung value. For example, the thickness of a differential strip is let's say 0.1 makapal yun, no? 0 0.1 value regardless of the unit okay? <coughs> 0 0.1 squared nila nakaratio sa 2 eh okay? squared will actually give you a value of 0 0.01 okay? which is smaller to 0 0.1 and what if the value of the differential strip or the thickness of the differential strip is 0 0.01 squaring it will actually give you 0 0.0001 which is also smaller or way smaller than the, the original thickness of the differential strip what i'm what am i saying here ano yung gusto kong i-point out what um what <coughs> i want to point out is if we have a very thin value of a differential strip and you raise it to a number the value of that uh, that term will actually approaching zero. So, ibig sabihin, since this is very thin and in square natin siya, it approaches zero. So, we can actually assume that this is zero. So, that is one plus zero. That is one. Raise to three halves one. So, approximately, your radius of curvature is just actually equal to one over y double prime. In that case, substituting it here, that will give you m over ei equals 1 over 1 over y double prime, or that's just equal to y double prime, which is just equal to the second derivative of the function y with respect to x. Now, looking at this term, okay, <coughs> So we have y prime equals m over ei. Now, ano ba yung m natin dito? Again, sinabi natin kanina, we define m as a moment or a moment function. Ano mong ibig sabihin ng moment function? Or what do we mean by moment function? So for example, meron ako dito simply supported beam. Okay? And let's say it has actually a, var a varying load. Okay? 
as you can see, no, in our, or as a review in our mechanics of deformable bodies, if I cut a member or any structural member or any body, it will produce <coughs> what we call the internal forces. So in this case, what I want, what I just want is an internal force which is, which is known as the moment. Okay, so let's say this is distance x. <coughs> in that case, if we show the free body diagram of the cut section, we will be having here a value of, or a value of m, which can be identified, or which can be solved, or we can identify its value using the shear and moment diagrams, or which is a simpler one, by using the moment equation functions. Okay? So, bakit ba siya tinawag na function? Because the value of m, or the moment, is actually dependent on the location. Ibig sabihin, it is dependent on our variable, which is variable x. Meaning, your moment is actually a function of x. Okay? Now, <clears throat> Let's go back here. Since this is a function of x, no? so we can actually integrate both sides of the equation. That will give you y prime equals the integral of the function m over ei. Again, uh, remember this is a function of x. Okay. dx. Obviously, we will be having an arbitrary constant plus c. Now, again, in differential calculus, y prime or the first derivative of a function is actually the slope of a given of, of any given curve at that point. Meaning y prime is actually the slope. Meaning y prime denotes our slope equation. Okay, malinaw yan, ha? Now, this can be, again, be integrated. So that is actually integrating y prime, or that is dy over dx. That will just give you y equals the integral of the integral of <coughs> m over ei dx. plus c well, let's say this is c1 dx and that will give you another arbitrary constant c2 that's why this method is known as the direct integration because we are actually computing for the slope and the y value or the reflection of the beam by Integration, that's why it's called direct integration, or it's known it's also known as double integration because to determine the deflection at any given point, you need to integrate it twice. That's why it's called the double integration method. Now, bakit ko naman nasabi na y is actually the deflection equation? Why? Why did I, did I say that your y is actually the deflection equation. Well, let's go back again in a simply supported beam. Okay. Again, let's say this is its load. So remember last time, in our introduction to geometric methods, we discussed of a term which is known as the elastic curve. Elastic curve is again defined as the exaggerated deformation or diagram or figure, exaggerated figure showing the deformation of the beam given the imposed loads. Okay, so for example, ibig sabihin, if I will be considering this point, let's say this is x1, point 1, the deflection at that point is actually defined as the, the vertical deflection is defined as the vertical distance 
from the original position of the beam up to its elastic curve since the elastic curve is the diagram showing or the figure showing the deformation of the fig of the of the structure so meaning this is deflection one so let's say this is point two the vertical distance from the original position up to the elastic curve again natin, this is your elastic curve is actually deflection two Okay. Now, bakit ba natin tinawag na Y is actually the same as your deflection? So, last time, I told you to review your analytic geometry. So, let's express this or let's put this figure in a Cartesian coordinate system. So, that is actually by putting your X and Y axis and setting the, this point as the point of origin. So, pwede ko na siyang drawing. Let's draw. Okay. So, as you can see, this is actually your x-axis, where y values of any function is zero. And this elastic curve, ito drawing natin, this elastic curve shows the deflection. So, tama ba na any, we define in analytic geometry that if I will be considering this point, obviously it has coordinates x1 and y1. Okay? So meaning, ang distance niya pala mula sa y-axis is x1, tapos ang vertical distance niya is y1. Okay? So, and let's consider also point 2. Para malinaw, no? So, it's clear. This is point 2, this is x2, and this is y2. Because this is actually coordinate of x2, y2. So, as you can see, the y value of that point is actually also showing the deflection of the beam. That's why the y function here or the y variable here is also what we call the deflection of that given point. Now, how do we compute for the deflection at that point? Obviously, to determine the, if the deflection or the y value at that point, you just need to substitute the value of x1. If you need to determine the disposition of the point, which is y2 from, from this, you will be having a distance of x2. So, substitute lang natin after getting the deflection equation. It's also the same in determining the slope. Because if I want to determine the slope at this point, we define slope as actually the rise over run of the tangent line at that given point. So for example, itong point na to. Paano kung determine yung slope yan? Its slope is actually when I project a tangent line there. And we define tangent line as actually as a line passing through passing through the uh, passing through one point or the what we call the point of tangency okay so this is actually the basic concept and if you have experience in determining the deflection using the double integration method if that is a downward deflection you act, you are actually getting a negative value why because the elastic curve is actually below the x-axis. While if you will be having a positive deflection, your deflection will be actually above the x-axis. That's why it's very important about the sign conventions. No? We, we are actually gathering if, if we have a, an upward deflection, we will be having a positive value of the deflection using the double integration method. If that is a downward deflection, you will also be having a um, we will also be having a uh, negative value in terms of the slope, since we are putting our beam in since we are putting our beam in. Uh, <coughs> in the Cartesian coordinate system meaning we will be considering the rotations of the angle in the Cartesian coordinate system if it is uh, 
a positive x and positive y of rise and run, obviously it is a positive slope. If it's a negative x, then positive y, it's a, it's a negative slope. So we will just be considering those. Again, let's look at the figure <coughs> y1 to determine the value to determine the value of this point. It has a coordinate of x1 and y1. Obviously, when we say x1, that is the x distance of that point from the point of origin, and y1 is its vertical distance from the point of origin. I don't know kasi kung nakita siya sa video kanina, that's why I'm, I'm repeating it. No? Now, meaning, to meaning y1 is the same as your deflection. Then y2 is the same as the deflection at point 2. Because it denotes the vertical distance of that point, which is actually as how we define deflection. The vertical distance from the original position to the elastic curve. And this is our discussion in the double integration method. But let's have also a review no, in creating the moment function so that in our next video, if we will be uh, in our example computation, dire direct na tayo. Okay? So let's have a review no, on how to create the moment equations. So for example, this is very tricky. So for example, I have a, again, simply supported beam, and let's say I have a uniform load W. Okay. As you can see, <coughs> no? if we cut the section distance x, we will be having here your moment value m, this is your distance x and your reaction at that point. Okay. So as you can see, since the load is continuous, when you say continuous, dere derecho, walang putol. Okay. Analytically, it will just pro produce a single equation of the curve and of the moment. Okay. However, if the loads are continue, discontinuous, let's say I have here a uniform load, W, tapos I also have here a point load, P. The equation of the elastic curve will now be segmental, meaning it's discontinuous. Why? Because there is a change in load at some points of the beam. Eh, di ba sabi nga natin, based on our, based on our um, elastic beam theory, the equation of the elastic curve is dependent on the equation function of the moment. So, since there are points that are actually discontinuous, putol yung load natin. Meaning, we will be having different moment, equa moment equations for each segment kapag napuputol po yung loads natin. So, ibig sabihin, naputol yung load ko dito kasi may point load, naputol na naman dito kasi nag-start yung uniform load, then up to dito. We have actually two points of discontinuous, discontinuity rather. And we have how many segments? We have three segments. One, two, three. Three. So in this case, we need to provide three moment equations. And using the double integration method, it's very hard for us if we will be using so many number of equations. What if I will if there is a problem and it has five points of discontinuity? Okay, so it's very hard. We will be integrating five equations. Okay, so we will be using what we call the Macaulay method. Okay. The Macaulay method is actually also known as the bracket method in which you will be using a single equation that will represent the whole equation. And how do we do that? We will just be actually cutting the equation on the last given node or on the last segment and create a moment equation. Okay? Ano kung pinagkaiba? Since it is also known as the bracket method, okay, Ibig sabihin, kung if, if you substitute a value of x, 
and the value inside the bracket will be negative or zero, you need to disregard that term of the function. Why? It necessary. It just means na hindi mo pa nararating yung load na yon. So for example, nandito pa lang ako sa point na to. Obviously, etong dalawang to na in the moment equation. If you substitute the value of x between these points you will be having a value that is negative doon sa segment na to tsaka sa segment dito. Meaning, let's just disregard that term. Why? Kasi kung nandito ka pa lang, hindi mo pa naman nakikita yung load P and the uniform load W. Okay? So, let's have also this uh, example on that on our next video, which is the examples for the double integration method. Both statically determinate, uh, statically determinate and let's have one example for statically indeterminate P. So see you on our next video.